And which one will I share? This one. It looks a little bit different this week because I'm on my little laptop and it doesn't do the scrolling thing, but we'll we'll it will work just fine. So we're starting on number five and these. I had a quick scroll through and the next ones, they're all quite large. So um, someone's going to read for a while. And Gary normally starts, so. Okay, I'll go for it. Okay. The Holy Spirit who leads to God translate communicate, translates communication into being, just as he ultimately translates perception into knowledge. How do you not lose what you communicate? The ego uses the body for attack, for pleasure, and for pride. The insanity of this perception makes it a fearful one indeed. The Holy Spirit sees the body only as a means of communication, and because communicating and sharing it becomes communion. Perhaps you think that fear as well as love can be communicated and therefore can be shared. Yet this is not so real as it may appear. Those who communicate fear are promoting attack. An attack always breaks communication, making it impossible. Egos do join together in temporary alliance, but always what each one can get Okay, where are we? And But always, for each one can get separately. Let me read that again so we, we have it complete. Egos do join together in temporary alliance, allegiance, but always for what each one can get separately. The Holy Spirit communicates only what each one can give to all. He never takes anything back because he wants you to keep it. Therefore, his teachings begin with the lesson. That's the lesson to have. You have, give all. To, have give all to all. I'm just going to throw out an idea to get the group's uh, input on this. Um, <clears throat> when, whenever the Holy Spirit is uh, spoken about as if it is an entity, always, always get, throws me a bit of a curveball. Because forever and a day in Christianity, I could never understand what, what the heck the Holy Spirit was. And so when I read it in the course, and it's giving it, um, you know, like a, a gender related, like he wants you to keep it. Um, I just want to hear from you guys what your input is on what you think is meant by that. Um, as I always thought the Holy Spirit was the ability to see um like God in all things, then you enter into the sacred moment and then this communion uh, of all things always, and I always interpreted that's that's what the Holy Spirit is for me. However, um, this speaks of it in a different way. Uh, does anyone want to add any insight to that or what your perspectives are? I was just going to say, I think, you know, as, as a human race we have this need to just put a, a label on everything um you know and i and to personify it kind of sorry to personify it then yeah 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 and it's interesting because i i have this chat um i had this chat with my daughter about you know the sort of the gender neutral and the non-binary labels and all of that that the kids are, have made cool these days and I've just said that, you know, and I can apply this to this situation here, um, you know, putting a label on anything is sort of um, limiting it. So, um, you know, I think he is, has sort of emerged from sort of one 
group of Christianity, but but we we just need to you know make our own interpretation. And I'm with you there, Gary. That you know I like sort of flipping back and forth. You can say she, he, they, it. <laughs> you know I love how Abraham Hicks talks about um, the Holy Spirit and refers to it as they or you know um it's it's ever changing and it doesn't have a label um because it resides in everything but i think you know as humans we need to just like the kids today they need to put a label on themselves with non-binary and and all of that um but you know i said to my daughter even when you put that label on yourself you're it's it's limiting you into this minority group so you know, why don't you just be you, just what your name is, that's who you are, and it's unlimited. Um, so I don't know, that's my little thought. Well, that was wise counsel for your daughter. <laughs> no, it is. It's very wise counsel for, for your daughter. Because a lot of a lot of kids are, you know, they don't even know what sex is yet. They don't, they've never experienced it, and yet they're claiming non-binary or I, I think I'm gay or I think I'm this yeah. and uh, and so you know it, it is it is an interesting thing to see the gender I won't call it confusion but but the gender fluidity in the younger generations now yeah it's very curious yeah. to me well, well it's, but... it it acts as all it, it just more of separation yeah yes it's true yes it's true but also I found with having a teenager who was you know, in between genders for a while that if I, if people ask me if I had children and I say, yes, I've got a 16-year-old or a 14-year-old, however old they were, they want to know straight away if it's a boy or a girl because that helps them in their judgments that they're going to make on what that person's like. Yeah. And, and what you're true. Because even like if I say girl, so they think periods, you have to worry about boys. There's, you know, it's a whole different thing in society what what people think of like a 16-year-old girl, a 16-year-old boy, worlds apart. Well, it, it makes people feel like there is a constant reality that they can cling to. Um, and there's not, you know. <laughs> Everything is quite fluid and changing. So I'm, I just find it a really interesting time that so many souls came in um, with that predisposition. And I think it's, uh, it's curious to me. Mm -hmm. But don't you think it's also part of the change that we're going through here? Like in the 50s, everything was he. I've got this old Scrabble board and the instructions uh, like for the next player and it's his turn and he does this and that. it's like a scrabble why yeah. does it have to have a gender yeah but, wow yeah. yeah you know we've moved on from that yeah I think actually Carly that's a really good point in in using this book as well because everything is he brothers um and it took me a while to get my to get through that um but now I I just it's just what they've used to be consistent. For me, it doesn't actually mean he, you know, this isn't about sex or gender. This is a this is just the reference to make it easier to talk about. And the Holy Spirit, my complete anti-religious bringing upbringing was very much, you know, we never nothing good ever came from religion, so we didn't. It was. Um, it's been very difficult to actually get my head around talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God. Um, and having done this for over a year together now, it's very different. And now I just, uh, and this is how I've come through it, is to actually think, okay, so that's like Tan today was saying, it's a label that we're using to recognise something. It's just a label. But whatever whatever we attach to that label is completely up to us as individuals. So yeah. for me reading this book, I know from the intent of it is to create more love and understanding and connection. 
So therefore, you know, I've looked for a way of how I to how to interpret the Holy Spirit, which is just the connection to God. It's the way that we can download some of that incredible whew, out there stuff that is just too hard to comprehend as a human. Oh. So that's kind of my take on it. Mm. I agree. Um, yeah, and I think yeah, it's beautiful right that, there, that we can read, you know, uh, you know, this this text which does have he written on it, and you know, we un, you know, we can keep a really open mind and we can look to other sort of um traditional texts which do have those sort of archaic um, labels and and ways of describing things and and bring our own sort of modern day contemporary insights into to this sort of old school text um, and I think that's what we need to keep doing um, is to let it be ever evolving and you know yeah yeah Joe what were you going to say um I was going to say, you kind of took my word, like listen to everybody talk and Gary's question around all of it. Um, for me, what really sticks out, it's just a level of comprehension. Uh, the label is put there to comprehend. And I, I don't know if maybe they're using he because he, masculine energy, you know, forceful, powerful, strong, things of that nature. And that may be why they're labeling it as a he instead of a they or an it or uh, who knows what words they could have used to put that label on to create that level of comprehension of what the energy is you're working through. Mm. Lots of people are going to be disappointed when they get up there and find out that God is a woman. <laughs> or no, or no gender at all. I yeah. Know gen sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, ever changing, just ever, ever changing. A woman one minute and a man the next and a, a transgender the next. You know? yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. What are these, what are these insects yeah. that are asexual? Yeah. They can be any gender. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? I was going to say like a tree, but some trees are male and female as well. Exactly. Um, what I love about this trap or this paragraph and what Joe said when he said communication, um, because it says the Holy Spirit sees the body only as a means of communication. And so everything everyone's shared, no matter the gender, what are they communicating? What am I communicating? What am I, when, it, when I bring it back to I. And so the Holy Spirit, it's those who communicate through fear, promote attack, though otherwise it would be love perhaps you think that fear as well as love can be communicated and therefore can be shared this is not so real as it appears and then the holy spirit communicates only what each one can give to all so me in my eye uniqueness my soul has a different way of communicating to v and to joe and to jane and so whatever i'm given by the holy communion however you want to see that the holy spirit to me is all things she ye, he everything um how do i then take that wisdom and communicate it not from fear but from love and so what was the teaching to have all to have give all to all so then how do i share that how do i communicate that where the ripple effect comes from pure love's potential and not from fear-based potential. And then where do I fit in the community with that communion to feel safe, depending on how I'm brought up and depending on my um, awakening, whatever age in my teens, how do I want to communicate that as I find myself through whatever choice I'm making in whether I'm a he or a she or everything? How do I want mm -hmm. to stand in that and find myself as I grow into that? Do I need the safety of this kind of a community or this kind of a community for the time being until I'm ready to be in full pure love's potential through the support of the Holy Spirit? 
personal evolution mm. awakening mm -hmm. Something just came to mind then, Carly, when you were talking about finding yourself. And it was um, something that uh, I don't know if you've heard of this poet, Gary, from your neck of the woods, but a poet by the name of In Q, I think his name is. Um, and he said his famous thing was, I find myself as I unbind myself from all that defines me. And... <clears throat> Just that word in italics there, um, separately. So egos do join together in temporary lesions, but always for what each one can get separately. I think, you know, whenever we're defining ourselves as something, whatever that is that we're defining ourselves, we're, we're separating ourselves from the whole. And um, I think that's sort of the main message here is the mind creates this illusion of separation and the body um, is the way that the, the body will communicate um, these separations and when you think of the mind-body connection and all the disease that we struggle with in the body or the dis-ease in the body, it's the body's way of saying, you know, your mind is is operating from ego right now in, in, in this place of separation um, and that, that healing starts to happen when we, when we you know, start viewing things as, as not separate anymore. Um, I don't know. That was just mm -hmm. a bit of <clears throat> And and who? What was the person's name? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Sure. Did you drop out? No, no, it's yeah. Every time I come to the city, my internet's just dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I dropped out, but I'm back. <laughs> oh, so we were just talking about the. Are you there? Yes. We were just talking about the quote, I find myself as I unbind myself from all that defines me. And I think the poet's name is In Q. Um, In Q. I think he's from New York, actually. Um, yes, he is. He's an American right soldier. Here. He's from your neck of the woods, Jane. <laughs> yes. He might be your neighbor. Have you heard of him? No, I know. You haven't heard oh, of him? He's, he's right out there. <laughs> hey, hi. I wish. I, I wish I wish my neighbor was uh just like this. Yeah. <laughs> I would invite him for dinner. <laughs> or her. But really I've I... heard I've heard that said in many different ways from many different people over over time, you know. Um, and he's just put it in a beautiful poetic way in the the stand up poetry that he does. Mm. I I yeah. love that bit on separateness that you bring up because it's either fear based or love in that upper sentence, and so. Um, the Holy Spirit communicates only what each one can give to all. And for me, that's through love, not through fear and separation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he wants you to keep it because the Holy he or the Holy Spirit to me is not just a he, but the Holy Spirit wants you to keep it. Mm -hmm. What he gives, what Like, there you Hello. Are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Hey, you're going to have to start charging your clients more so you can upgrade your hotel next time. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't even trust the hotel one, so I hotspot anyway. But why is my oh. reception better in the country? This is ridiculous. <laughs> no, that's like unheard <laughs> of, right? <laughs> Uh, I'll share screen well, again. Let's get back to our course. Yes. Yeah, so we're we happy with that one. Shall we move on to the next paragraph? Yep. Okay. Quick before it disappears again. 
Number six. Who wants to read that one? I normally go second, so I'll, oh, I'll read it. Good on you, Charlie. <laughs> this is a very preliminary step and the only one you must take for yourself. It is not even necessary that you complete the step yourself, okay. but it is necessary that you turn in that direction. Yes. <clears throat> Having chosen to go that way, you place yourself in charge of the journey where you and only you must remain. This step may appear to exacerbate conflict rather than resolve it because it, because it is the beginning step in reversing your perception and turning it right side up. This conflicts with the upside down perception you have not yet abandoned or the change in direction would not have been necessary. Some remain at the step for a long time, experiencing very acute conflict. At this point, they may try to accept the conflict rather than take the next step towards its resolution. Having taken the first step, however, they will be helped. Once they have chosen what they cannot complete alone, they are no longer alone. And I, I love this because with that previous paragraph, when I first heard it, I was reflecting on how with everyone's sharing about their children and that, how I, I personally felt like I never belonged growing up because I was often bullied at primary school and high school. And so I always had this wound of I don't belong and I had a lot of spiritual stuff going on but I didn't know how to fully land it as a teenager and so um I chose not to belong and when I had the chapter before I reflected on these beautiful people children you were sharing about and how they really want to belong to something that keeps them feeling safe secure as they learn who they are as they reawaken who they know they already are but they don't know how to use it and then at the end of this chapter they're not alone. They're no longer alone. That's and then as we get older, we discover we were never alone. The Holy Spirit, or however you want to say it, was always with us mm. and that we've always belonged. Thank you. Beautiful. Mm. this step may appear to exacerbate conflict rather than resolve it i know there's been times where i've thought ah oh, i've reached i've reached this is who i am and it's you know i don't need to do any more learning or any more breaking apart yeah. and it was it's just like oh mm -hmm. no there's more <laughs> and and more and more and more yeah. so yeah it's kind of like about loving the process really isn't it mm. let the let the revealing unfold mm. yeah. you're very quiet gary I am I am introspective tonight, actually. Oh. Just looking at more of uh, of how it's going to how I'm understanding it and applying to self right now. Mm. But this is a really beautiful paragraph. Mm. Surely is. This conflict with the upside down perception you have not yet abandoned or the change in direction would not have been necessary. I having just mentioned how, you know, frustrating I got or frustrated I can I was getting with finding that there was more work to do. Now I get a little bit more I get excited rather than frustrated. It's like, oh, here's a next yeah. podcast. Yeah.
Do we need to um, break this one up anymore or shall we move on? I think we should move on unless okay. someone else has a question. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Part B, to have peace, teach mm -hmm. peace to learn it. Shall I read this one or Jane, do you want to read it? I'll read it. Okay. Go for it, V. Okay. Hopefully I will stay online. All, <laughs> who, all who believe in separation have a basic fear of retaliation and abandonment. They believe in attack and rejection. So that is what they perceive and teach and learn. These insane ideas are clearly the result of dissociation and projection. What you teach, you are. But it is quite apparent that you can teach wrongly and can therefore teach yourself wrong. Many thought I was attacking them, even though it was apparent I was not. An insane learner learns strange lessons. What you must recognise is that when you do not share a thought system, you are weakening it. Those who believe in it therefore perceive this as an attack on them. This is because everyone identifies himself with his thought system and every thought system centres on what you believe you are. If the centre of the thought system is true, only truth extends from it. But if a lie is at the centre, only deception proceeds from it. Mm. I have a question about an insane learner learns strange lessons. What you must recognise is that when you do not share a thought system, you are weakening it. I get that part, but an insane learner learns strange lessons. That that seems like a judgment. Well, I, I'm interpreting it, Jane, as um, as whatever whatever you whatever your perception is, um, oh, that okay, that it is that will be what you take away as your learning. So it is more, okay. I'm taking it as it's more of, of a perceptional thing. So I as this learner learn, no, uh, an insane learner learns strange lessons. If they're looking out of the filters of insanity, they will only have strange um, compensation for that viewpoint. Right, right, right. You, you could put in any label there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thanks. I love, the, there is a line here I think is really important. It says, this is because everyone identifies himself with his thought system and every thought system centers on what you believe you are. If the center of the thought system is true, only truth extends from it. If it is a lie at its center, only deception. So, well, that's just so logical. It's not even funny. But um, when we think about it, if, if you look at, at, at um, pundits that really are locked into um, radical religious belief systems, uh, at the center of that is judgment, superi superiority, um, and condemnation of others who believe differently. You're going mm -hmm. to have, that is a lie that's at the center of many religions. Only, only deception can actually be birthed from that. But if your thought system is like the Course in Miracles, which is, you know, we're connected to all things, then only truth can extend from it. Really simple concept said in, said in a different way, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it but doesn't indeed. everyone think that what they know is true? Yeah, because yeah. people think that they are their their experiences and their thought system. But at, at the end of the day, you know, our thought our thought systems are only about what we made up about what we experienced. It's a construct. You know, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily real. It is just what I've been able to make up through my life experiences and the beliefs that I developed from those life experiences. That becomes my construct. And then because we have a, a thing called the RAS system, the reticular activating system, that begins to um, 
eliminate contrary information uh, mm -hmm. to our belief system. So that when we look mm -hmm. out into our world, we just gather more and more evidence that our belief system is real and true. If people feel like they're being persecuted, then they'll experience that persecution. Those of you that are living in, in America, it, it's so strange to me that Christians actually believe they're being persecuted. <laughs> By who? <laughs> who is Yeah, really? You, know, really? you guys are the one persecuting everyone else. I don't get it. But yeah, um, really. that's, that's a perception and a very strong perception. And I think, wow, it's like it really is a construct that we're all creating. And and the only kind of the only kind of acid test I've got, if it increases love for God, gentleness of my mind and kindness, then I'll call it true. And if it creates something different than that, then I know I'm in a separated mind. And I know all of you probably have experienced the same thing. <clears throat> I can be like totally enlightened for an hour. And then for six hours, I could be in the mud, can't see a thing, <laughs> judging everything. <laughs> and, and then I wind myself back and I'm like, oh, I'm all enlightened again. Okay, I get it. Uh, but it's this, it's this ebb and flow of our of our own perceptions um and our triggers <clears throat> so it, the the i think the ultimate lesson is to, to stay consistent the holy spirit see it in all living things and then and then you have a better chance of being able to walk to the other side of um this appearance of a lack of love in the world I love what you're saying, Gary, because that appearance is a lack of love is my my perception from my wound that I'm seeing in the world. And then it says, if the center of the thought system is true, only truth extends from it. So, But if it's a lie in its center, only deception. So whatever my perception is from my core wound, what I love about this, because that other sentence says, um, those who believe in therefore perceive this as an attack on them. And then basically if you have these thoughts and you share them, what I love that about it is as I share things, I reflect, I hear myself, I go deeper into the layer of what that means to me, even if I don't realise I'm doing that. I sort of, I, I personally sort of go ask a question to myself and then I get to identify is this thought even real? And then I go a bit deeper and I unhook all those layers back to my authentic self as I speak. Because if I don't speak, it's all in my mind and it gets layered on top the next time I perceive something in the world. But if I share it with a friend that I feel safe to share it with, who's not going to blow it out of proportion, then I get to hear myself, I get to be seen, I can go deeper into that and reflect and then normally... For me, that's my first step from the paragraph before because that first step then allows a bit more awareness and the next time I see it differently and my perception changes. And so um, if, if I go into the centre of those thought systems, I'm going through layers to get into those centres generally for me after all these years of my age. And um, and I get to the either lie, deception, or I get to the truth. Generally, no matter either side of the polarity of those two things, I'm learning something and I go deeper into the truth. So even if it was a lie, it doesn't, it's not like I um, need to have a failure moment. It's me awakening into the truth because no, even that no. lie gets me there. Mm. Okay. I, I get that now too, Carly, now that you've been speaking about that when it says that when you do not share a thought system, you're awakening it because when you do not share a thought system, you're awakening it. Right. Even like I find that I can just sit quietly, someone's got a problem and I don't even need to say anything and they just talk and they'll come up with a solution. Yeah. My clients do that all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. that someone's actually like listening and doesn't even, I don't even need to. And it's better if I don't provide an answer. I don't provide guidance. I'm just listening. 
I, I, I'd like to share something. I had an experience with a, um, a coach in Sweden. I was recommended to her uh, by uh, a dear friend and I, I became um, a member and a partner in an international organization called the International Wellness Alliance, which I would recommend you all look up and join them. They have classes and they do really good things. Um, I'll be teaching some classes for them. And I met with her and we're having this interesting conversation. And um, she asked me a question, which, uh, which I, uh, I answered, which was great. And then she just went completely quiet. She never spoke again for about 15 minutes. And she, we both on Zoom, and we just sat there and stared into each other's eyes. And um, which I found, I thought, gee, I want a coach like her because it's so easy. <laughs> Ask a question, just <laughs> shut up, let the client come up with the information themselves. I thought, oh, gee, and someone's going to pay me for that. So, um, but it was, it was curious. I didn't find it transformative for me. But I did find that I got a, another another level of awareness in my conversation with her, which I thought was really interesting. That if you set the space with the intention, people come up, they always have their own answer. At some level, they always have it. And uh, it, was, it was curious the way her style of coaching was. Um, I've not I've not seen that or experienced it before, but I thought it was good. And so I just wanted to reinforce the fact that there are people out in the world that are um, making a lot of money, asking a few questions and then going mute and letting the client come up with their own answer. So it's a big <laughs> business. <game. laughs> um, I, I also would just like to comment on um, Carly's um, first um comment about every thought system centers on what you believe you are and and so we are our thought systems but we can change our thought systems and we can change what we believe I think that's the core of this is you know to find the truth is like to actually question our thought systems and say is this really true is this what I really want and yeah can I change it and and does it increase the love in me or does it increase the fear? Yeah. Right. I think that's a criteria. Yeah. You know, that, that brings up something that um, is so in my life these days. And when I speak to people, and they'll say, gee, you know, you're you're a happy person, you have contentment, or you know, they'll just comment about whatever. And um, I'll say, Well, you know, there's this thing called the Course in Miracles, and oh, well, what exactly is that? And what I what I'm so grateful for is is all I have to say is, well, it's it's based on the the premise that there are only two things in this world, love and fear and what i say further is well what camp are you in at this minute this hour um and it, it just allows you to put yourself where you are it just calls a spade a spade and you don't you don't dispute it because you know because it is the truth and I'm 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 just so eternally grateful. But when I, the interesting thing is when I say that to people, which I find myself more and more encountering people, they like just their eyes get big and go, what what, you know? Um, so it's you know, and to me that's sort of like. Um, you know, when you do not share a thought system, you are weakening it. Well, I want to share it. And I find myself, because that is my intent, that's what I do a lot these days and will continue to, is to share it. Because 
I don't want it to weaken. I want everyone to say, huh? <laughs> wow. Huh? I might want to look at, you know, and so on. So, yeah. Cool. Any other comments? This, uh, I had to scroll down to check on everybody's still there. <laughs> I don't want to miss anybody if they've got something to say. No, I just wanted to throw out there, I'm in agreement. Like, if I don't share what's on my mind even if it's like those moments where i'm driving in my car and i have that great thought that you know at one point in my life i'd be like i'll remember that i'll get back to it later and never comes back I, i've learned that if i share it whether i have my son type it down or i turn on the voice recorder and send myself a text or something um getting it down getting it out tends to make it blossom tends to make it grow it it, it becomes something like once it's out of the ego it can flourish if you hold it within and you hold it in that mind space, that ego, whatever it is, it seems to dwindle and die. And uh, that sucks because I've had some great ideas that I let die because I didn't have that comprehension of share it, say it out loud, get it out, write it down, record it, whatever. Like I'm that weirdo that drives mm -hmm. down the street recording themselves with the phone and the car holder saying whatever brilliant thing came to mind yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Hopi elders, uh, the spiritual leaders of all the North American uh, tribes, say that there is no future because as soon as you speak your word, it's already manifesting in creation. So mm -hmm. to be able to, to speak your, your truth and uh, speak that into creation, I think, is a really important thing. And to uh, also recognize that our words are created by nature. So to um, watch what we speak about, which is the, the very thing that directionalizes the focus of the mind, and the focus of the mind is literally your worship. So whatever your mind is focused on, that's the God that you're praying to. So for all of us, you know, to be able to Watch what's coming out of our mouth because it is created by nature. We are spinning of the web of our future by the words we speak, yeah. uh, especially with the emotions that those words are spoken with. That becomes um, that becomes something that I know for myself. <clears throat> I have to be much more judicious about. I was working with a client today, and she she. Um, a lot of my coaching with her is is uh, she's in a very tough was about her uh, her ex husband and the narcissism he she perceives he has and and I I finally told her I said you do realize that you're creating a stronger bond with this individual rather than separating yourself and moving on with your life because you're worshiping the past and keeping the past well and truly alive in your nervous system and building deeper and more profound neural pathways so that your thoughts will turn into a habit by constantly running down the same thought system you've had about him for 12 years. It's like, if you're really going to put it behind you, stop speaking about him. <laughs> Start speaking what? about what you what you're going to create in your future. And then you start to free yourself. And she was like, no one's ever said that to me. I had no idea that that was true. And I'm like, yeah, that's no, totally true. <laughs> so we we really have to look at our language is powerful. Well, right? I and love that, that um, saying, your word is your wand. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wand. I like that. <laughs> I caught uh, something from Lao Tzu this morning where it was like, uh, watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your words. Watch your words because your words become your actions. And it just kind of did that snowball effect. I'm like, wow, that's freaking oh. sweet. I'm wondering if I should quote from Buddha from the Dhammapatha right now. I think I shall. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> this is my favorite quote I say all the time. The word manifests, I'm sorry, the thought manifests as the word. The word manifests as the deed. The deed 
turns into habit, the habit hardens into character. So watch your words and your ways with care and let it spring from with concern for all living things. For as a shadow follows the body as you think and as you speak, so you become. <laughs> so Home run. So, <laughs> so simple. So simple. I have lectured. I've given a whole entire talk on a stage on that one quote. Because it is so rich with the mm. truth. Uh, Gary, can you share the text that that quote is out of? Um, because Joe, you um, quoted uh, your thoughts become your words, and you attributed that to Lao Tzu. But there's a lot of confusion about that one quote has been said in many different ways, and I've been trying to find the root source of it. And I've, I've traced it back to one of the Upanishads, ancient yogic texts. But Gary, you've just said a beautiful version of it from the Buddha. So I'd love to know what it, source that comes from. It's from the Dhammapada, which is the sayings of Buddha. And Could I don't write ask that in me, the text. Could you write that in the text? Me to spell it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Dharma, maybe just this. Dharma is D H A R M A. Pata would probably be P A D. Teach you. Yeah. Um, Gary, I'm sure it's in at least one of the text manuals that I've got. So if I find it today, I'll send it to you. Thank you. That would be helpful. But that's the source of that quote. Um, it's from the ancient teachings of, of Buddha. Beautiful. We had better get on to our um oh. <laughs> yeah. our, we got our homework. <laughs> didn't got, didn't we just start ten minutes I know, ago? I know. Uh, I got one uh, question for Gary first. Gary, okay. what's that? when are you gonna when are you gonna bless us with a book of all of your wisdom of mm. quotes that not only you have made but have found deep meaning in from others uh, you're going to make me walk the walk the walk of shame here joe because i have the i have the book almost completed and i wait wait, wait for a weekend where i don't have anything to do but i never have weekends where i don't have a deadline um because you know i'm producing stuff all the time and then i want to have a life so but um i if I had one solid weekend and spent eight hours each day, I would probably get it done and it'd be, be ready mm -hmm. for editing. But it, it is close. I, I think part of my resistance is I wanted to write the book on trauma mm -hmm. um, and, and um, you know, kind of give this process out to the world and have that be, you know, what I, I produce. But there's so many other factors that keep coming into it that I, um, I'm not quite sure what if I should make it for the general public, if I should make it for leaders and organizations, if I should make it in relationship to people in relationships that need help because the unhealed trauma actually breaks. Um, it has broken lots and lots and lots of people in relationships. It breaks relationships. If you look at the root cause of obesity if you look at the root cause of a lot of the illnesses like diabetes and cancers and lung disease oh it is coming i i i project by the end of the year i'll have it completely done sounds like a perfect fall project perfect what i'm sorry fall autumn yeah yeah um yep. yeah and gary That's i've been sitting here just wishing that you had at least 30 more good years left. He does. Oh, well, that's We're very good. Here we go. I don't know if I want to will that upon myself. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I could I could easily kick off in my early 90s. That would probably be pretty good because if I lose mobility, oh, you guys have to come to America and like help me then because Robert <laughs> and I talk all the time. 
what's what's gonna who, whoever's gonna be left is gonna be 100 alone you know so you guys are my only friends you know you're the people i hang with i i don't hang physically with anybody it's me and robert and his 94 year old mom with dementia you know that's my little family so um so when one of us kicks off it'll be interesting i'll import you from australia <laughs> but what are we we don't That'd want to come great. to america sorry gary <laughs> but well, well one of the problems is we're all going to be about the same age so we'll all be kind of creeping around yeah you know? yeah borderline decrepit It'll be, and hopefully well not hopefully we will be at such a state of joy and yes. love and enlightenment and power that our bodies won't even matter at that point in time. We'll just we'll just sit around and we'll giggle and we'll laugh and we'll eat chocolate all day and ice cream, which we never allowed <laughs> ourselves when we were younger, and we'll just be in joy. Gary, I just had the most amazing idea. You have to create the Course in Miracles Retirement Village. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And we can all we can do it down in Nanup. That's yes. where we build it. Yes. I all day long. All day long I'll live in Nanup. How do you Oh Joe, you would let's love do it. Nanup. Veronica. Yeah. You're the accountant. Okay. Make it happen. What, what's yeah. what's the name of Nanup? Nanup. N A N N U P. Okay. All right. I'm 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 gonna research that. It means the stopping place. Yeah. Uh, I will case. buy a room in advance at the Course in Miracles Retirement Village. <laughs> I love that. Well, then we can all kind of take care of each other. Yeah. We'll all try to do the Course in Miracles. We go, hey, what do you think it means? I just love. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I have visions of that. So I think it would be awesome. I'm with you. I'm, I'm there. Nana, here we come. It would be good. It's Joe, terrible. you would freak the hell out. You really would. It is so beautiful there. I'm, I'm going to get my rowboat and start rowing my way there because I'm not going to afford a plane, plane ticket at this moment. Dude, it is a I'll see you guys in about long, three months. It's a long, oh, more like three years. It's a long, Whatever. long. God directs me, so whatever way he wants to push that boat, I'm going. <laughs> it, it's oh, good there. Like, all right, people, we better he... share our lessons. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What are we gonna <laughs> what are we gonna take away? I've got mine. I know oh. what I'm gonna be learning for this. Um let me just type the name properly. Uh communicating becomes communion. So I shall be very aware of um, what I'm saying and how I'm saying it and listening. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to take that beautiful quote um, that Tania uh, shared. I find myself as I unwind myself by all that defines me. That's very That's cool. I, I adore you have the best quotes, young lady. I think it's well, I'm writing it, my true. <laughs> the spoon metaphor and this one. It's like I'm putting all of these together in my own book um coming ah. out next year. So watch the space. <laughs> I may buy the spoon one because that is so good. Yeah. So it's, good. It needs to be shared. Hmm. Yes, it definitely does. And that I'll I'll share mine now because mine was about sharing. It's to have peace. It's just the title of this chapter, which is to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. So, you know, um, all of these things must be shared. Mm. Yeah, that's the one I picked as well. So I'm having instead to have love, teach love, to learn it. Beautiful. I had one, one, and now I'm changing it to V's one because mine's similar to um, Carly's. It is think, embrace, and speak with love. 
Beautiful. You're looking particularly gorgeous this evening. <laughs> I love you it when you're dirty, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking truth. <laughs> you are. <laughs> and mine is, I am no longer alone in Nanup. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I love that, Jane. Manifesting, <laughs> manifesting the course yes. in Miracles Retirement Village. Yes. That's right. We're speaking it into creation. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, now, as I've been going in and out, have okay, I Okay, has everyone going? shared? Did, did Joey, have you? I have not. I'm still stuck between two of them because uh, what Tanya shared, I was going to share, but. You and I, you know, brilliant minds think alike. You don't have to just have one, Joe. Pick <laughs> um, them all. Pick them all. You do not lose what you communicate. Beautiful. Mm, nice. I think that'll help me communicate more because I am breaking out of that introvert shell. So I think that would be more fitting to be a home 